Um, this is going to be a quick video on a um, Smith Corona PWP 3900 word processor slash electric typewriter. Um, effectively this is a machine that was sold and this one's dated 1993 so it was, these were sold around that time and prior um, as a way to write and edit text documents without the need to buy a full computer um, obviously they were more price competitive for word processing um, so this is a pretty much a machine that's designed specifically for editing text writing documents and then obviously being able to print the documents with a um, daisy wheel printer um, effectively the machine itself is keyboard obviously there's a lot of extra shortcuts and codes with on the keyboard um, everything that's highlighted in red is accessed by pressing the code key um, and then obviously that will give you the function um, the processor board sits underneath the keyboard and houses all of the controls for the printer um, floppy drive sits in the top right corner power supply sits in the top left which is just a tra AC transformer um, rectification and DC supply is on the board um, at the moment I have the case off so I just have the power connector bridged um, and there's a two pin connector there which is used to tell it's going to typewriter mode um, the actual daisy wheel assembly or head assembly is um, mounted on two um, two rails um, the actual track that is used to drive backwards and forwards you probably can't see it very well it's a thin plastic strip that runs along the back which has got teeth on um, and then it's held in place by a spring which you can just see there um, and then that is what is actually used to drive the head assembly or the carriage assembly backwards and forwards um, the motor or sorry the solenoid for the hammer which is obviously used to print the character is there in the bottom corner it's offset to one side um, and then behind it is a motor that drives the daisy wheel um, itself it sits in the back of the carriage underneath this um, main roller and then in the corner is the a bit dark bit in the corner is the other motor which is used to drive the paper feed um, an interesting thing about this uh, word process which I didn't know about um, I'm not sure honestly how many support it or when it was bought in um, so I don't know masses about these um, is the fact that it can save a document in ASCII format um, which effectively means it's, it, it's instead of when you normally save a file on this um, it saves them onto floppies on a three and a half inch um, floppy formatted to 720 kilobytes um, when you save a file in the standard PWP format um, it generates a text file that contains um, headers there's like a group of stuff that sits in the corner of the file in the top corner um, and then everything's the everything's finished with a um, a character which signifies a carriage return to the next line um, it doesn't always like the file to be edited I bought a USB floppy drive um, I saved the file from this um, and then try to open it on the PC I can open it in notepad plus um, plus I can edit the file and I did have luck editing simple text into the file saving it again and then the, this would open it um, but it wouldn't do um, ASCII art it, you, you tried to do it and if you did get it to load the file it would be all squished it wouldn't look like it did on the PC um, so what I found was again I didn't know it had this um, ability is if you save the document in ASCII format it literally saves a text file with the extension ASC that's it the actual file itself contains no there's no headers there's no nothing it's literally the plain text of what you typed in um, which is great because then on the PC you can open notepad plus plus copy in your artwork or whatever you wanted to print obviously within reason of what's on the daisy wheel um, 
and then just do file, save as, and then name it, and then as long as you do .asc for the extension, it will then save it as that. Um, and then the, this will actually open that and print it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you that now. So at the moment, the memory is clear because every time you load a document, it loads it into the memory, um, which obviously allows you to edit and that. But obviously, if, if there's power failure, then it, it loses what's in the memory. Um, so it's one of those always good to save what you're doing things. Um, so I put the floppy disk in, um, and then to recall a document, eight, um, and then obviously there's two on here already. Um, both of these have been saved from the PC on a USB drive, um, and as you can see, they've got the ASC as the extension. So then we select the first one, and then hit return. So now that is loaded into memory. Um, as you can see, it's got 9% has been used. Um, so now we can view that by pressing 1 and then view what's in the memory. And then as you can see, there's a very slow scroll on this because obviously it has to draw line at a line. So. But as you can see, there is the artwork present. Um, and it loads it as it should see it on the PC, as far as I can tell anyway. Um, so from there, you can if you do code and tab, which takes you back to the menu. Wait for it to finish scrolling. Pressed it too quick. Yeah, you have to wait for it to finish scrolling. And then you do one thing at once. Obviously, you can see the gist of the artwork that's in there. Um, the default line spacing in that is uh, eight from the top, or six from the top, eight from the bottom in terms of... Yeah, see, now it's just done the command told. Um, so, to actually get it to print properly, because I believe... Obviously, you're limited by the character spacing. At the moment, it's on ten um, characters per inch. Um, I have got a 15 character per inch wheel, daisy wheel on the way, which should be better because you obviously slightly more characters per line, slightly better pictures. Um, so this is more just to mess around with the what it's capable of. Um, so if we do two, and then we've got um, tabs or margins. Um, pretty much, from what I can tell, the first one sets I the stop and the start of where you where you want it to go as a max to min. Um, so if we do space now at the moment it is now waiting for you to do it so if I do that I can then move that to the end press margin and then that signifies it's done that and then we go to the other end of the paper because this paper is not actually quite centered where it expects it to be and then if we do code and margin and then when we press return it takes it back to the beginning um, and then we've got we have A4 which is the paper length um, that can stay as it is that's the spacing which obviously relates to the daisy wheel you have um, line spacing and then the top margin and bottom margin I for testing I set these to one and one um, I haven't figured out how to scroll down but you can scroll up with space so one and then there again. One. Um, impression relates to how hard the hammer on the daisy wheel head hits it. Um, it recommends heavy for carbon um, tape or carbon cartridges. Um, but I've just left it on medium. Uh, so then if we press return, it will save that. Now to actually print the document, you can either press three, or you can go in and then you can actually highlight certain areas that you'd like to print, and then it's obviously code and P, and it will print that specific area. 
Um, there's a lot of other things that this can actually do, so but it's more a case of sitting down and fiddling to see what I can, what it can and can't do. Um, so what we do is if I do code and, oh sorry, not code and three, just three even, it will then ask me one page, finish with one page, um, and I have not actually touched the bottom two. So what we do is when I press return, it will now start printing. fit so that's the finished outcome um so I say yeah it, it, it's handy that you can uh, save stuff as simple text and then effectively print it um, makes it a lot easier moving stuff between a pc and something like this if you uh, ever wanted to use one of these to print something um so yeah so thanks for watching